everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Jennifer and today I'm just going to do a makeup tutorial and a get to know me fun facts about me um, I'm gonna list all the products that I'm using below so I don't have to focus on that but we're just gonna jump right on into this so I love watching YouTube channels and I love watching makeup tutorials but I even love more <laughs> when I get to know about the person I think that definitely helps me relate to them and kind of understand their makeup style so today I'm just gonna get ready talk to y'all and tell a little bit about myself so as I've said before on my channel I am very reserved and very conservative when it comes to my makeup and in person I am very quiet and very reserved um, I have been told in the past by people that they think that I'm really snobby or snooty because I'm quiet when they first meet me or um, it just takes a little bit for me to warm up to people my husband Matt is very outgoing and we balance each other out in that aspect because he doesn't know a stranger like he will talk to anybody about anything and that's just his personality and I love that about him that's why I married him but for me I am very very quiet um, I'm really shy too so it probably makes me a little awkward when people meet me for the first time but it is what it is that's who I am so yeah if you know me in person you may not think that because I am pretty bubbly, but it takes me a while to get to that point where I feel comfortable. And as I've told y'all before, I am kind of obnoxious in the mornings when I wake up super happy and I think people are kind of taken back by that when they do get to know me and they're like, oh, <laughs> you're not as quiet as I thought you were. So, a little fun fact about me. Something else, I have really weird eating habits. Um, I don't like when my food touches only certain foods are allowed to mix or touch um, a good example of that is when I like to mix my mashed potatoes with corn and I know that's really weird and maybe it's not to some but to most they're kind of like oh that's gross but for the most part my food cannot touch I don't like dressing on my salad I have to dip it because I like to make sure I, I can choose the amount of dressing that is on my salad or on my food I don't like gravy. I don't care if it's white gravy, brown gravy, if it's your mom's special gravy. I I just don't like gravy. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't like chicken and waffles because they are touching and I can't handle that mixture together. Um, I When I eat waffles or pancakes, I have to dip my waffle or pancake into the syrup. I can't just pour it on. I don't eat the ends of my chicken. And this is where a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, but I don't like eating the ends of my chicken. And this actually works out best for Matt because he gets double food <laughs> pretty much. Um, I'm really particular on stuff like that. Same thing with my steak. Um, again, y'all are probably gonna hate me, but I like it well done. If there's any pink, I will very respectfully ask the waitress or the waiter to take it back and cook it a little bit longer. But before I order, I always let them know, like I need it burnt. <laughs> and a lot of people don't like that because the flavor is taken out or whatever but i'm just weird my food it makes me very particular like my food has to be a certain way i don't like eating <laughs> um i don't like eating at potlucks especially like at work and stuff because it bothers me on how people could potentially prepare their food i don't know what their living situation is like i don't know how clean they are and that bothers me and i have a really hard time with that I actually had a really bad experience once with that. A co-worker brought in something for potluck and I eventually went somehow, I ended up going to her house and I saw how unclean her house was and ever since then, mm -mm, I will not eat at a potluck. Now if I know you and I've seen your house, I know what you were like, then I'm prob I'll be more prone to eat your food, but if I don't know who you are, mm -mm. Um, so yeah, I have really weird eating habits. I am super, super picky. I, um, I kind of stick to my norm. But the weird thing with that is, and this blows Matt's mind, is that I like sushi. I love sushi. But I don't like seafood. That's another thing. I don't like seafood. I don't like crabs, crab legs. I don't like shrimp. I am very particular on what kind of fish. It's like maybe one or two salmon. Maybe tuna. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of seafood. I do like, and it's so weird, but I love uh, fried clam strips. I know, I'm just 
I'm a weird bird when it comes to stuff like that, but I don't like seafood and that definitely blows people's minds too as well. But at this point, you're probably like, well, what do you eat? <laughs> um, I do like salads, I like chicken, I like spaghetti, I love pastas, I, um, I like poke, and it has to be from a certain place or a certain kind, but for the most part, I will eat that. Uh, I like ramen, I like pho, I like Filipino food. I'm always, I'm getting better at this, but I'm always down to try something new for the most part. There are certain things that I'm still not 100% comfortable eating, but I will, for the majority of the time, try something new. So, <laughs> and again, this, as I said before, Matt really benefits from this because he gets um, a lot to go. My, my food usually ends up being to go. I eat really small portions and uh he eats it later for a snack <laughs> and i don't hear him complaining about that but yeah i just have really weird eating habits um with that i guess another little fun fact about myself is i'm kind of like an old lady and i will be very honest and i'm very proud of that i go to bed early i wake up early i like old lady um activities i like to read i like to go on walks i don't like running <laughs> uh, I do like to crochet, I like to craft, I like things like that, and I feel like a lot of people my age, they're like, oh god, you're boring. And I probably am, but that's okay because that's who I am. I, yeah, I'm kind of like an old lady, and I really do like old people. Um, before we moved to the previous church that we attended, um, I was in the seniors class, and you kind of got to adopt a senior and take care of them and help them and spend time with them, and I love stuff like that. Growing up, I would go to my grandmother's uh, nursing home and spend time with her and the residents there and just, that brings a lot of joy to my heart. And I have always had a very special place for, um, I say elderly, but for older people. Um, something else, I am adopted. And that usually blows people's mind because the number one thing that I get told when I tell people that I'm adopted, they always say, but you're so normal. Well, yeah <laughs> i guess i mean after my weird eating habit y'all may not think i'm normal but i am adopted i was adopted a couple of days old and um i love my parents they are my parents um i'm really open about my adoption so if anybody has questions i am always willing to answer um yeah i'm adopted <laughs> I guess something else that blows people's minds is that my husband and I live in an RV. And again, the first reaction we get from people, they're kind of like, ooh, you're trashy, like you live in an RV park. Yes, we do live in an RV park, but no, we are not trashy. Um, so yeah, like I said, a lot of people, when we tell them we live in an RV, they're like, ooh, you're trashy. I'm like, no, 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 hold on, we are not trashy. We are actually really clean people, good people, um, not, trailer park trash people our RV is actually really really nice um, people always judge us when we tell them that but then when we show them our RV they're like oh wow like your RV is bigger than my apartment and it is um, it's a nice RV we have I am mean, looking over here we have a fireplace and TV and a couch and chairs and a dining room table and a bathroom a stove like it's literally just like an apartment it just has wheels so a lot of people immediately after judging us and thinking that we are trailer park trash, um, they immediately ask, well, why did y'all move to an RV? Like, what, what's behind that? So we lived in a house. We bought a house when Matt came back from his, um, I bought it when Matt was deployed. And uh, don't think that I went and did that. Uh, Matt and I both discussed it and he got to see the house, but I did all the buying process while he was gone. Um, but we did the whole house buying thing and we lived in a house and we were homeowners before the age of 30 and yeah we we did it but it didn't make us happy um it wasn't the fact that it was the house like you know we house hunted and we tried to find houses and you know we, we looked for a very long time but honestly we were not happy and i had got offered orders to be up here where i'm stationed at right now and we wanted to buy an RV to kind of live in for a little bit and travel with it. And then when we found a place to live, like a house, then we would just use our RV as um, vacation, you know, vacation time and stuff. But once we got in the RV, while we were looking for places to live, um, we ended up really, really liking it. 
and it's not traditional and Matt and I have realized that we are not traditional people. I say that with a little bit of flexibility. Um, we are traditional in the sense that for like our, I say our cores and values, we're kind of on the traditional side, but obviously our living arrangements, we are not traditional and we're okay with this. Um, it's our life and I will not tell you how to live, so I don't expect people to tell us how we live. But um, we just really enjoyed it. We're very simple people. So with Matt being in, in the Navy for a very long time, he lived a very simplistic life, like living in Iraq, for those who don't know anything about the Navy. Um, a rack is smaller than a bunk bed spot. Like you know how a bunk bed will have the two layers, like you have like the bottom one with the, the rack, the top above you, and then you have the top one. It's smaller than that. Like you don't have a lot of room. You have to store all your belongings underneath your bed, your rack, and um, that's kind of all you get. So you really have to live a very simplistic lifestyle when you're in the Navy, living on a ship or being on a ship. So Matt, that was his lifestyle. And to begin with, he's never really been a person to have like a lot of belongings. Like he's a very simplistic person. And uh, I'm the one that struggles with that, to be honest. But um, in tech school, I had to live a very simplistic life too, because you get half a room and you have a roommate and you have a closet and that's all you have. And if you can't put your, if you can't make that work, eh, well, <laughs> you gotta make it work. So we both have lived that like the simplistic lifestyle and we know what that's like and we like that. So when we moved into this RV thinking that it was gonna be short term, we actually really, really liked it. Now with that being said, um, it was really hard for me to transition from a house to an RV with my belongings. Um, I didn't like the fact that I was gonna have to give up some of my closet space, just being really selfish to be honest. Um, I didn't like that. That really didn't sit well with me and I, I personally had a hard time adjusting with that. Um, and again, Matt Matt didn't. He automatically got, he was used to it. But I had to downsize my closet. We had, we sold all of our belongings. Um, yeah, we just pretty much just moved <laughs> from a house to, I mean, we had a three bedroom house. It was really 2,500 square feet and now we live in an RV. So that transition, getting rid of stuff and like having to pick and choose, do we really need this? Do we not need that? Um, I struggled with that. But at the same time, our bedrooms, our spare bedrooms that we didn't occupy were ending up being junk rooms. Like, let's be honest, y'all. I know every person out there has a junk closet, a junk garage. Um, and how often do you really use that stuff? You don't. So. Um, yeah, we just kind of got rid of everything and made our way into an RV. So that was really fun. And I mean that being fun, like honestly, I really enjoyed that tra that transition. Um, I, I don't mind being close to Matt like that. I know a lot of people ask me, well, when you and your husband get annoyed, what do y'all do? Well, I go in the bedroom or he'll stay here or I'll go somewhere else or whatever. Um, we handle it, we like it, we really like this lifestyle. And again, a lot of people don't, <laughs> I don't think they know how to react when you tell them that we live in an RV, but we're proud of it and it makes us happy. So that is really all that matters. Um, and as you can see, you know, this is my, my dining room. I'm using my dining room table to film, but it's really nice because we paid the mortgage and here our mortgage is, I say our mortgage, but our rent is three times less than what we paid for when we lived in a house and we don't pay for utilities and all in all we're saving a lot of money because we don't have to mow a lawn and we don't have to maintain much um, it's a good lifestyle and i highly suggest people who are kind of contemplating like when they're first married or if they're trying to save money rv life is definitely the way to go but yeah fun little fact about us that most people don't know or are kind of baffled they're kind of like what uh, we do live in an RV, and I think that's really cool, and I'm proud that we do. I'm trying to think of something else fun. When I first got baptized, when I was a kid, um, I had a cat, and her name was Coco, and she meant a lot to me. But I got baptized the first time when I was six years old, and I felt like my cat needed to be baptized, so I baptized my cat, and uh, <laughs> I <laughs> she didn't do so well with that, but it made me feel better. 
Um, I'm a huge animal person. I love animals. I love anything to do with them. I'm scared of half of the animals out there. Not gonna lie, but I do appreciate them. I see them as God's creatures and they need to be treated with respect just as we do as humans. So I'm a huge animal person. I love my favorite animal is a cow. I would love to own a cow one day. <laughs> I know y'all are thinking you can't do that in an RV and I know that, but I just, I really love cows. I think they're so adorable and people who are always telling me, like, well, you never had one. I know, but they're cute and it's my favorite animal. And I do like donkeys and horses. I think ultimately if I was able to, I would love to own land and have a donkey, a horse, and a cow. But who knows? Life is crazy. Life goes in ways, life happens in ways that we don't even expect. So I keep my, my options open, keep my life open with stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think, what else? I like to fish. So growing up, my dad would take me fishing and that is some of the best memories of my life is just the times that I spent with my dad fishing. Um, I don't know what I'm doing when I fish to be completely honest. I hold my pole different. I think I hold it wrong, but I know there's not a rule book of how to fish or like how to properly fish, but I hold my, I hold it upside down. Like I have to reel with my right hand. So that means that my, my reel is opposite. It's flipped. Um, I don't know. I guess I just kind of naturally did that and my dad was like cool whatever you know whatever makes her happy whatever <laughs> you know allows her to do that um, and to be honest I don't know much about fishing I just know that it makes me really really happy I don't know much about bait I don't know what kind of bait to use I don't know much about lures I just know that I use a hook and a worm <laughs> worms are always my go-to and sometimes a swivel and yeah that's what makes me happy i don't care about the size of the fish i don't care what i'm fishing for i just have a freaking blast when i go fishing and it makes me really really happy um and that will joke that it looks like i'm reeling in a hundred dollar bill when i catch a fish i get super excited it can be a little sunfish like a little piggy perch and i'm still super excited or it can be a catfish and i'm still really really excited um it just makes me really happy but I know that people look at me when I go fishing and like I said I hold my my rod differently than most people so they're probably like oh look at this this girl over here not knowing what she's doing and the truth is I don't but it brings joy to my life it makes me happy so I really don't honestly care but I loved love to fish um, I'm really grateful that Matt likes to fish he is awesome at it um, he knows all the ins and outs of it. He is such a water baby. He loves anything to do with water. And I will bait my hook, but I struggle taking the fish off my hook. Um, I feel bad, to be honest, and it's kind of a hypocrite thing to say because you're like, well, why are you fishing then? Um, I just feel really bad. I feel like they're one of God's little, little creatures, and it makes me sad seeing them have a hook in them, but for the most part, I will try to take it off myself, but I have to have gloves or a towel to do so. So, and I know there's a lot of females out there. I mean, I have, I'm friends with them where they will take it, take the fish off their hook themselves. They don't need a towel or gloves. Like they are just awesome like that. I am not, <laughs> I need help, but I, I love fishing. Like I said, some of my best memories with my dad and with Matt are fishing and it just brings happiness to me. So a little, little fun fact about myself as well. Um, trying to think what else. I am not very artistic, but I love makeup. And I can't draw to save my life. I went to school for photography and that was kind of like my, my art, my passion. But when it comes to drawing, painting and all that, that's not me. Um, I'm a firm believer that makeup is a form of art but it's not a it should not be considered a form of soul a person being beautiful i think that without makeup a person is still really really beautiful i think your inner beauty is what makes you a beautiful person so when i tell people that they're like well why do you do makeup then i'm like it's my form of art and that makes me happy but a lot of people just 
I guess they don't see that or realize that. And with makeup, it's your style. And I know I've preached about this before, but I always want people to know that you don't, your style for makeup is you. Like that is what makes you you. Um, you don't have to have bold colors or a full matte, beautiful, you know, glam face. You can just wear a little bit of makeup and still be really, really pretty. Um, makeup is definitely a, an expression of who you are, just like art. And I like it. <laughs> I'm not very good at it, to be honest. But again, it brings me joy and that makes me happy. Just trying to buffer out this ever since I have my PRK sometimes when I will push on my lash line for eyeliner or for false eyelashes it hurts a little bit so try to be a little careful with that and yeah. so I know that said this is like a little fun video about myself but I'm actually gonna be using these false eyelashes today and when you get false eyelashes it's always good to bend them because they have been on their they've been on this for so long the, the container that it comes in that it'll shape to that and they're not very flexible so it's always good just to take it and move it around like this and I I still struggle with false eyelashes I'm not gonna lie they are in my opinion they, it takes a while to get to get comfortable with them just like eyeliner and our eyebrows and anything else it just takes practice so again, just taking both pairs and just moving it around to get them flexible because they're a little stiff after being in that mold for a while. So I am using the House of Lashes Eyelash Adhesive and it comes in this color and a black color and I love this. This, this blue works so well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my eyelashes and I use my tweezers and I fold them. Try to see if y'all can see that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly coat the lashes. And you're just going to let it, just let it sit in the air for a little bit. Y'all can see that. And let it get tacky. So when I was younger, my mom would go to the grocery store and my mom is really protective of I me. Mean, our parents are really protective and like really stern parents growing up. But my mom said the few times that she would let me um, kind of do my thing when I was at the grocery store, she always found me in the makeup section. She was like, I would see you trying on makeup and looking at different colors. And she was like, you always got drawn to makeup. So makeup has always been, a, I guess, a passion of mine. I just never really knew it or wanted to explore what possibilities that could be with it but I do love makeup so right now I'm just gonna lightly push put the lashes on my lash line at the outer corner and I'm gonna take it and push it into the inner corner and make sure that it just sits on that lash line and at this point the glue is tacky so it sticks to it When the glue is not tacky, your eye, the eyelashes will start to move everywhere and then they get, it's a hot mess up there. And then what I do is I'll take it and I'll just push it onto the line. And the great thing about this glue is that it dries clear. I love that. When I use the black glue, I use that when I use black eyeliner because I know that it will, it dries dark. And I'm just taking my tweezers and just kind of pressing that the eyelashes onto my lash line. Now normally you can put mascara on before you put your lashes, but I don't like to do that. Now with these, I don't, for thicker eyelashes I will, but these are more of like a natural lash. And what I'll do is I'll take the end of my tweezers and I will just run it underneath there to make sure that it's adhesive, it, it's sticking. And that's it we're done there you go and they're on so again just taking the, the backs of my tweezers just making sure that they are 100 percent on there rubbing underneath now i will take a black eyeliner and i really like the ramel london eyeliner it's waterproof and i will just go on my 
lash line on the top where I put my uh, false eyelashes and I'm just going to line it to help it blend in a little bit. Then I'm going to use my CoverGirl Lash Flash Fusion. And I know this, I mentioned I would use, tell all these in the description, but since it is regarding the false eyelashes, I'm just gonna lightly coat them. And I and some of his friends are going to a tattoo convention today. And I'm really excited about that. I love that my husband loves tattoos. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I am, if he could be covered, and I mean covered, I would love that. <laughs> I know it sounds really weird, but I think I think he is cute to begin with, but I think he's like extra cute with all his tattoos. I would say that he's probably about 45, 50% covered. I'm not a fan of face tattoos, and I'm if he ever wanted one, I'd be very um, selective on what he chose, but I'm all for the neck your arms, your stomach, legs, hands, like I, I love that and he loves them too and um, it just fits him, it fits who he is and for anybody that doesn't know my husband, he is very outgoing, he has a great personality and tattoos just fit him and I've seen pictures before we met, before he got tattoos and I look at him and I'm like, it's not Matt, <laughs> like looking at him now, like I said, he's still in the process of getting more but when I see him with tattoos, I'm like, that is him. So we're going today, and like I said, I'm really excited about that. I love, tattoos are a form of art. They, in my opinion, they are. So I love seeing people's art. I love seeing what they have to offer. And um, I just think it's really exciting. And it got a little dark in here, so I'm gonna turn this up and it's gonna make me look really white, but that is okay. Again, I live in an RV, so this is my light source. And I have an O-ring, so I have to, use that to get some light sometimes in here. So in an RV and having to share a bathroom is not that bad. And it's just like sharing a bathroom at your house. And that's something that a lot of, um, when I tell people that live in RV, they're kind of like, well, how do y'all live together? And I'm like, well, how do you live in your home? <laughs> it's no different to be honest than living in a house or an apartment. You share the bathroom and yeah you just get ready maybe i will do a video of my rv and show y'all what it's like to live in one we had to get creative on certain ways to store some of our stuff and how to utilize our space the most that we could with less like for example in our shower uh, matt bought a curtain rod and he hung it above our shower so now we can put our shower caddy and other stuff on that so little things like that definitely um, you got to get creative but if that's something that y'all would like to see or know a little bit more about let me know I would love to share that with you um, we definitely live a different lifestyle than most people that we know and um, it's pretty cool yeah I'm excited to go to this tattoo convention I want to go fishing tonight I love I prefer to go fishing in lakes and rivers versus the ocean I guess a little fun fact about me, I'm scared of the ocean. You know what, I'm actually scared of a lot of stuff. I am a scaredy cat and I'm very honest and open about that. I am scared of a lot of things. I'm scared of the dark, I'm scared of going into water, I'm scared of forests, I am scared of a lot of different things. Um, I've always been a scaredy cat. I mean, growing up, I was so scared all the time. Like I was scared to use the restroom when I was a kid and um, like in my own home. And my mom would have to sing to me to get me go down the hall to the bathroom because I was so scared too. Um, and I don't know why. I had a wonderful, wonderful childhood. If anything, I had like the perfect, no, I did have the perfect childhood. Um, came from a very loving Christian family. My parents loved the heck out of me. Um, I'm very blessed to say that I've never not known what it's like to not be loved. Like I've been loved my entire life. And, um, I didn't come from a bad a, a bad home. My parents are amazing. My mom is one of my best friends. I love my dad to pieces. So I don't really know why I, I was scared growing up and that I'm still scared. 
but I am a scaredy cat, but I do prefer to fish in lakes and rivers versus the ocean, where if you don't make a weird face when you put your mascara on, you're not doing it right. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> get going soon so I'm trying to do this in a less than 30 minutes it's done so fun little fact that when you put math I mean you put lipstick on or lip gloss and it gets on your teeth a lot of people know this but some don't it's always good to take a piece of paper fold it a little gross so I'm sorry but it's like getting on your teeth you like this and see all that access that came off that's what it would have gotten on your teeth I've seen some people use their finger I don't like that it kind of grosses me out I'd rather use paper and just kind of blot it like that if you feel like you have too much and instead of using your finger or using a brush you can always kiss the paper to make sure that's evenly on there but that is it. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you for sitting here and listening to me ramble on. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And know that makeup does not define your beauty, but your heart does. And I hope you all have a great day. Thank you all.